Have you ever wondered how job sites like Indeed or LinkedIn store thousands of listings, match job seekers with employers, and track every application? In this video, I'll walk you through a complete database design for a job portal, just like those platforms. We'll start with the business requirements, break it down step by step, and I'll show you how it all fits together in a clean, normalized design. If you're building a job board, practicing database design, or just want to understand how a real world system works, this will be super helpful. Also, you can get the full database design and explanations at the link in the description. Let's get into it. You can't design a good database without knowing what the system needs to do. Here is what our job portal needs to support. First, users can register as either job seekers or employers. Employers can post jobs with full details, such as the job description and company name. Job seekers can search for jobs and apply to them. Employers can view applications and add internal notes to the applications. Each job belongs to an industry and has a location and employment type. We want to track the status of each application as it goes through the process. And of course, we need to store resumes and timestamps for key events. It's a common setup and there's a clean way to design this. We'll walk through each table in this design and I'll explain how they all fit together. I've created this design in dbdiagram.io. I'll put a link in the description if you want the diagram or SQL script. We'll start with the user table. The table stores everyone, job seekers and employers. We've got an ID as the primary key, which you will see on all tables. The email allows the user to log into the platform and to send communication to them. We could have a separate username, but I don't think we need one. The password field is the password for this user. The user type indicates whether the account is for a job seeker or employer. This can be used to drive different functionality on the platform. Then we have the created at column, which captures when the user record was created, and the updated at column, which captures the last time the user was updated. These fields have been added to most tables, which is helpful to see how often we get new users or when records are updated. The user type table is a lookup table that stores values such as job seeker or employer. It's related to the user table here. This job seeker table stores the extra information specific to job seekers. We link to the user table with the user ID. We also have a full name field and a phone number for the person. The resume URL field stores a URL to where the job seeker has uploaded their resume. This would be a server somewhere accessible to the job portal. The location is where the job seeker is based. This could be expanded to be a lookup table with countries and cities. The employer profile table is the same idea as the job seeker table, but for employers. This also links to the user table with the user ID column. It stores the company name and the company website. It has a description of the company and the location. Why do we have this table and the job seeker table when we have the user table already? Well, it's so we can add specific information that's only relevant for certain types of users. I've created other videos on designing databases for subtypes like this, and this is one solution. Because this table is separate from the user table, we can have multiple employer profiles to the same user. This is helpful for recruiters who may work with multiple companies, or people who change jobs and start recruiting for another company. They can keep the same user record, but have a new employer profile. One thing to notice here is that there's a possible mismatch of data. We have a column in the user table that stores the user type, which is either job seeker or employer. We also have related job seeker and employer profile records. What happens if a user is set as an employer but creates a job seeker profile or the other way around? That's a risk with this design. There are a couple of ways around it. We could use a stored procedure to build a logic that updates this user type column when the profile is created. Or we could remove the user type column. We could assume that a user could be a job seeker and an employer at any point during their career, and this would be captured by their profile table records and not this column. Let's move on to the job post table. This is the core of the system as it's where job listings are stored. It links to the employer profile table using the employer ID column. In this table, we have the title of the job, which is shown prominently in the job listings. The description field is a large text field to store the job description. We have a location, which is the city where the job is located, 
or perhaps some other kind of location like the suburb or region. We have the minimum and maximum salary because we all love to see the salary range on a job listing. Once again, we have the created at column which shows when the record was created. We have this created by column which is the user who created the job listing. We have these three columns in the middle here, the industry ID, the employment type ID and status ID. Each of these link to a lookup table that stores different values related to the job listing. We have the job industries such as healthcare or IT or hospitality. We have the employment type, which is things like full-time or part-time. We have the status, which is values like draft, open or closed. These could be text values or enum values, but I prefer lookup tables for defined list. I've added a link to a video in the description for more about this. Next is the job application table. When a job seeker applies for a job, we create a row here. We have the job seeker ID, which is a record of the job seeker that applied for the job. The job post ID refers to the job that the application is for. The cover letter URL and resume URL store the links to the cover letter and resume used for this job. The status ID links to this job application status here and stores the value of the application throughout the job application process. This could be values like applied, reviewed, rejected, accepted, and so on. We also have the applied at column to record when the job was applied for. Using the job post and job application, the platform can do a range of things on the front end like show the number of applicants overall, the number in each stage, and even show some stats from the job seeker's perspective. The job application note table lets employers add internal notes to an application. These are private and only viewable to the employer, not to the job seeker. It's useful for tracking communication or feedback without the job seeker seeing it. We have an application ID that links to the job application field. The note text is the content of the note that is made, and created at stores the user who made the note. This design covers the essentials of a job portal, but there are a few optional extras you can add to this. You could add the ability to let job seekers bookmark or save jobs. You could log the searches that people are making when looking for jobs. This could be helpful for analytics. You can store scheduled interviews for jobs with times and links. You can add notifications to users about new jobs added or status updates to jobs. This could be mostly the application code, but perhaps some database work as well. You could also enhance the employer profile area to set up companies that are separate from employer profiles. So here's our complete real-world database design for a job portal. We started with the requirements, then broke them down into users and profiles, jobs and industries, applications and notes, and several statuses. You can take this structure, adapt it to your own project, and, and expand it as needed. If you want the full SQL script and diagram for this design, you'll find it linked in the description. And if you want to learn how to take an idea like this and turn it into a solid professional database design, check out my Effective Database Design course. The link's below. You might also want to watch this next video where I design a database for a flight booking website. It's a bit more complex and just as practical. Thanks for watching.